In this lesson, we'll look at the many controls and indicators of the power plant. Starting with the power plant information center, the engine display. Most engine dials have white arcs for transient readings, green arcs for normal, yellow arcs for caution, and red radials for maximum areas, so you don't have to remember figures. They also have a digital reading. The needle and digital values change color to get your attention. Yellow for caution and red for danger. If the reading is invalid, the arc is totally white, the needle disappears and the digital value is replaced by dashes. Top left and right are the engine rating mode enunciations. Here we're in max climb, but there's also MCR, max cruise, MCP, max continuous power, M top, max takeoff power, and N top, normal takeoff power. We'll deal with these later. Underneath are the digital values of torque bugs commanded by the FADEC and whether the pneumatic bleed valves have been selected on or not. Non-standard bleed air selection is indicated in yellow as a reminder. A quick tour of the dials. Here you have engine torque as a percentage. With analog torque bugs commanded by FADEC, corresponding to the top corner digital figures. The bug is removed with the condition lever at start and feather, or fuel off, or if there are problems with the parameter. Note that as the needle enters the yellow arc, there's a one second delay to confirm the value before the needle goes yellow. This is to stop spurious indications during transient operation. Propeller RPM, NP, is a real figure, not a percentage. There are underspeed and overspeed yellow arcs and a three second confirmation time before the needle goes yellow. The ITT needle goes red above the radio in flight. But during and up to 30 seconds after engine start, a max starting red triangle is shown at 920 degrees. The needle goes red beyond this temperature. NH high pressure compressor speeds are shown as a percentage of maximum RPM. NL, low pressure compressor speeds, are also a percentage of maximum RPM. They don't have a dial, but the digits go red when over the limit. Also shown are fuel flow in kilos per hour, oil temperature with min and max radials, and oil pressure with a min radial and two yellow arcs as well as the engine indications, there are annunciation areas. The power plant message area is very important, even though it just has a white text. FADEC 1 or 2 indicate a FADEC channel problem. The other will automatically take over. But if you see power plant before dispatch, then it's a no-go item. It should really be in flashing red. Uptrim comes on in reverse video for 5 seconds to get your attention, then goes steady during uptrimming. Auto feather arm does the same. Check engine display flashes yellow for 5 seconds to indicate a problem displaying critical data. This area announces either the overspeed governor test or auto feather test in progress. This shows fuel quantity and fuel inlet temperature for each tank and static air temperature. As well as the engine display, you can also select the engine display format on MFD1 or 2 by using the engine system button on the ESID.
you get a simplified display with the same functionality. No dials, but digital readouts. With the same color changes and the same message enunciations. Remember that there is no mechanical connection from the power levers and condition levers to the engine. Instead, the FADEC and PEC operate together to electronically control the engine, taking position signals from microswitches or potentiometers known as RVTDs, Rotary Variable Differential Transducers. Number one and two power levers are normally moved together and control engine power in the forward power range and engine power and propeller blade angle in the beta and reverse beta ranges that is just above flight idle to maximum reverse. The range just above flight idle is the flight beta range used for approach and landing. In the forward range up to the rating detent Advancing the power levers signals the FADEC to increase fuel to the engine in direct proportion to power lever movement. The torque and prop RPM will also increase, bringing the prop into the constant speed governed range. In flight, you normally leave the power levers at the rating detent and select different power ratings with the condition levers. Above the rating detent is the over-travel region. In an emergency, it gives an increase in requested power of up to 125% of the max takeoff rating. In over-travel, the prop is set to its maximum 1020 RPM. When pulling back the power levers, you regain control of the blade angle at the top of the flight beta range. To prevent unintentional operation below flight idle, there is a mechanical stop gate. You lift the release triggers to move past the gate. The beta warning horn will sound if the gate is raised in flight. From flight idle, the power levers have sole control of blade angle and prop speed all the way back to the disc position at about zero degrees. There's a detent at disc before you can get to max reverse angle and max reverse prop RPM. Between disc and max reverse, fuel flow and power output are increased. Apart from abnormal operation and engine shutdown, both condition levers are normally operated together. They control prop speed in the constant speed range between the minimum 850 and the maximum 1020 RPM. Feather unfeather signals to the PCU and fuel on and off signals to the FMU. Moving the levers from fuel off to start and feather signals fuel on for engine start. The props will remain feathered. After engine start, before taxiing, lifting the levers past the start and feather gate unfeathers the prop. For taxi, set the condition levers to min. Min gives a prop speed of 850 RPM and will eliminate propeller rise and reduce propeller noise when making reverse power selections. There's another gate at min before entering the constant speed range. In this position, the prop is governed at approximately 900 RPM. At the max position, the condition levers are governed at 1020 RPM, and that's the takeoff position. If the condition levers are not in max, a takeoff warning will sound when you set takeoff power. On ground, with the power levers at flight idle, and the condition levers between min and max, the prop speed is fixed at 660 RPM. This is under speed governing. So basically, although moving the condition levers is continuous, they only set four fixed prop speeds triggered by micro switches. 660 on ground, 
Max 1020 for takeoff and in flight, and intermediate 900, or MIN 850 in flight. These standard ratings are often referred to as underspeed, normal takeoff, max climb, and max cruise. In all ranges, you can adjust friction knobs to control the resistance of the power and condition levers. Now let's continue with three other panels. On the forward pedestal is the engine control panel, and the propeller control panel, and overhead is the engine start panel. The event marker push button places a bookmark, that is, it saves data in the engine monitoring system. Use this if you want to flag any unusual engine performance for maintenance. Event bookmarks from two minutes before to one minute after you press the marker. Pressing the deck decrement button reduces the takeoff torque on both engines by 2% for each push, up to a maximum of 10%. Remember that the commanded torque is shown on the engine display bugs. Reset lets you change your mind and go back to max. Now the MCL and MCR push buttons. With the condition levers at min 850, pressing MCL maintains the prop speed but gives max climb power. Similarly, with the condition levers at 900, pressing MCR maintains 900 RPM prop speed but gives the torque for cruise. The auto feather system is used to automatically feather a prop in the event of an engine out at takeoff. It is selected on prior to takeoff. The alternate feather system is used as a backup to manually feather a prop when condition lever selection has failed. You press the guarded alternate feather switch light to feather a prop. The green light comes on for 30 seconds, indicating that the pump is running. Alternate feather does not need engine oil pressure. It has its own oil reservoir and DC alternate feather pump. On the engine start panel, the ignition switches are normally in norm, so that the FADEC takes control of engine starting. You choose which engine to start by moving the select switch to the 1 or 2 position. You usually start number two first. Touch the select switch to select engine number two. The select segment of the start light illuminates, indicating that the start control circuits are armed. Now touch the start switch light to start engine number two. The start light illuminates and the FADEC commands ignition as NH speed reaches 8%. When the engine is up to approximately 64% NH, the select switch is demagnetized and springs back to the center position. The start light and ignition go out. And two seconds later, the select light goes out. The engine continues to accelerate and should stabilize at idle speed. Now some other controls. We've seen the engine intake bypass doors. When open, the engine intake flanges are automatically electrically heated when static air temperature is below plus 10 on ground or plus 5 airborne. The blue propeller ground range lights indicate that a prop is in the ground operation part of the beta range, slightly below flight idle to max reverse. Consult your abnormal checklist if these lights come on in flight. On the left side panel is the prop overspeed governor test switch. This must be held down during the test. With the power levers at flight idle and the condition levers at max and the engines running, touch the test switch to hold it down and see the indications. You get the overspeed governor test in progress messages on the engine display. These can take up to 30 seconds, so be patient. When you advance the power levers, 
check that the prop speeds are governed at approximately 860 RPM. And you get the overspeed governor test pass messages. Note that it's important to make sure that you move the power levers back to flight idle before releasing the overspeed test switch. If you take more than 60 seconds on the test, or if you release the switch before you get the passed or failed message, you'll get the abort messages. If you get the failed message, then you'll also get a PEC caution light. The caution light and system must be reset by a technician before you can restart the engine. Finally, power plant warnings and cautions. For engine oil pressure, or FADEC fail warnings, shut down the affected engine. For PEC cautions, don't retard the affected power lever below flight idle on landing and increase landing distance. For FADEC cautions, move the power lever on the affected engine slowly and smoothly and don't move it below disc on landing. For fuel filter problems, monitor NH and ITT. Finally, if you get the power plant advisory in flight, monitor the situation and advise maintenance later. But prior to dispatch, it's a no-go item.